Um, let me give you a little bit of background about me, and then we're gonna, I'm going to find out a little bit about you. Um, I am here primarily for communication. So even if it's graphic design, graphic design is communication, right? It's just a different form. Graphic design is you're, you're designing graphics to be able to convey a thought, message, or emotion to somebody else for a specific purpose, or even for a general purpose. So, in a, Misty, mm -hmm. did you get permission to come in? Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Um, I am, uh, I guess, a country boy. Um, born and raised in Great Falls, Montana, a little bitty town. You probably never heard of that. Uh, but beautiful, God's country. It is a wonderful place to grow up. Loved being there. Um, you know, I took some of those pictures, not all. Uh, the one in the middle on the bottom, that's my brother-in-law and my son-in-law and the guide in front of him as we were walking, going through the mountains on horseback. And just, it's just a great place. Um, I came from a large family. I'm one of seven kids. And um, I went to Catholic school uh, when I was younger and then uh, public school eventually. Uh, we had nuns that would walk around and whack you with a yardstick. I mean, that was just a whole different era. It's not like that anymore, thank goodness. Um, married 39 years, so yes, I have gray hair now. Uh, Liz, you may know her, Mrs. Palagi teaches here in this campus, uh, English. And we have uh, two kids and now five grandkids. Um, started out as a part-time announcer at a radio station and made a goal. And this is why goals are important. And I learned early on I was young and foolish and you know, long hair and weird looking back in the day. And that's the way people actually looked in that day. Um, I made a goal. And that is, if I can't make it in this business in five years, I'm going to learn how to do it and get to a major market. Because in that world, it's kind of like baseball, right? You start in the minors, small town in Montana, and you want to get to a major market because that's where the money is and that's where you know it's fun to be on the radio and all that wonderful stuff. So I gave myself five years to do it and I was very blessed in that four years and six months from that when I started I actually got a job in Minneapolis. So I go to Minneapolis market number 14 I was in market number 296 I think so it was quite a leap. You want to explain to them what that means, market? Well, what it means is market rank size, okay? Metropolitan areas are all ranked. Who knows, what's the number one ranked market in America? New York. New York. What's number two? California. Or not California. Southern California, Los LA. Angeles. Number three? Uh, Chicago. And those are the big three. And then it really starts to kind of lob off after there. But the top ten are New York, LA, Chicago, San Francisco, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Houston always says it's fourth, but maybe within the city limits it is, but we're talking metropolitan area, okay? Sugar Land counts, right? Arlington counts in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, not just the city limits of Dallas and Fort Worth. So that's what I'm talking about. Then um, Atlanta, Washington, Boston, and Miami. So those are the top ten. And you want to get in the top 10, but you want to get in the top 25 or 30 when you're starting a little bit of radio station. You want to get in the top 50, somewhere where you can at least get a little bit of notoriety and get some experience because you'll find that when you get among people that are good at what they do, it really rubs off on you. Anybody here golf? Okay, well you will someday, probably. But here's the deal. If you golf with really poor golfers, your score typically goes down. If you golf with really good golfers, your score typically goes up. Why is that? Because it rubs off on you a little bit, right? Girls basketball team wins, they're champions, right? Teamwork, they encourage each other. So with every win, now you're getting more motivated, right? The bar is raised, but you want to attain that raising the bar because it's fun, man. It just it rubs off on you. And you go, yeah, let's go. This is great. So. I got to Minneapolis, and I figured I'm going to learn everything I can because now I'm in a big city. Lots of radio stations. Now, I was in a format called Top 40, which was the most popular, what would equate? It'd be like uh, KISS, right? Um, so it's primarily current music-based with some older songs, but primarily currents. And 
Every teen, 18, 24 year old, those demographics, young, all listen to top 40, right? So there were four top 40s in Minneapolis, and that's a lot for any market. That's two, maybe three too many, right? And so it's very competitive, so you're doing everything you can to try to beat the other guys, and, to do, and it's, it's really fun. And again, it rubs off on each other. You get a lot better because now you have competition and you're around competitive people. So because the competition is there, they're out hiring good announcers and good people from all over the country to come and be part of this big fight that you're in, this big war, this great competitive environment. And I learned a lot, so I became a research director we did in-house research. I'm not going to bore you with what that means. But what that means, well, essentially what we did is we had a room about like this with a phones. There were no cell phones at that time. They were all landlines. So you would take a phone book directory and go through it and just randomly start calling numbers and ask if there was anybody there between a certain demo, you know, any male or female from the ages of 12 to 24 years old. Oh, there is. Okay, great. May I speak to them for a few minutes? It's a, we're doing research about radio. Okay, great. And then we get them, and we would play actual pieces of songs down the line and let them rate the music that way. And now we typically do it online. And so we started to learn how the other stations weren't doing that. So we were going to the audience and asking them what they thought about the songs we played or didn't play. Well, our ratings start. Now, all stations do research, but that was one of the first in the country ever to do it. I was very fortunate to be there at the time. Learned program management, all of that on the run there, and I became a production director, an assistant program director, a music director, eventually became the program director, and I'll explain later what that means. The program director really is the person who is responsible for everything that is on the air. So that's a fairly important job. Uh, took me all over the country, from Minneapolis, uh, went to Kansas City, Buffalo, Washington, D.C., which was great, Chicago. Now I'm in the top ten, Washington, Chicago, Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth, and here I am. I stayed here. I got tired of moving around. But it was a great career, and it was a lot of fun. I worked for a lot of companies, many big ones, some are not in existence anymore. Uh, Doubleday is the anchor there. They're a book publishing company that used to own radio stations. Uh, Walt Disney Company, you know them, CBS, Sirius XM, ABC, and so forth. Um, iHeart in the middle. Um, then I became a consultant after I got out of day-to-day -day radio. So I traveled around the country and helped radio stations in competitive situations. Small markets, Cape Cod, very small market out there outside of Boston, out on the Cape, you know, cool little market. Orlando, which is a very growing, thriving, you know, that's where Disney World is. Uh, San Diego, Seattle, Salt Lake City, um, Phoenix, Miami, I worked at a lot of different markets consulting. And that was kind of a, a sheet that I would send out to let people know, well, you know, I've been around doing this a while. But starting at the bottom, it's chronological, KDWB, AM and FM, Minneapolis. Then I went back to my hometown for a minute and a half because I was out of work. And then I went to um, Buffalo and Washington and Chicago and Houston. When did you get married and all this? Um, I got married when I was in Minneapolis. And um, Mrs. Polarchy, this is horribly you know, this is embarrassing, but I'll tell you anyway, so it almost never happens. I married a phone groupie. <laughs> disc, jockeys, disc jockeys on the air get called a lot, especially by girls that hear these voices. They go, oh, he sounds so dreamy. And usually, you're very disappointed when you see what this person looks like, because in your mind, it's like, wow, this, ooh, that, that sounds really good, right? And then you meet them, and they're like some dweeby, you know, overweight, you know, pimply faced you know, just bald, whatever. And you go, whoa, you know, how does that beautiful voice come out of that person? But it happens typically, and they say, you know, you have a face for radio, right? Which means you're not horribly good looking. It, it, nevertheless, she had called several times, and one day I had a group um, that I was bringing up to the radio station interview. 
Um, you may remember Rare Earth. I don't know. Okay, right? So they were in town, small market, and they're playing a concert, and I brought them up to the station to interview them. It was a Saturday, and they were having a Saturday night concert. And I went into the radio station, which was in a bank building, we'd go up to the station, and I walk into the station, and there's this girl standing there, this skinny little girl, picking up tickets to the concert that she had won. And she's at the front desk, and I walked in, and she turned around and looked at me, and I had a sense of who it was just by the way she looked at me. And so I took the group in, and she met, ooh, all these rock stars, and, and we go into the production studio, and I interview them. And later, she called and, hey, you know, it's good to see you at the radio station and everything else. Well, one thing led to another. Eventually, I had gone out with her a few times. And then I moved away to Minneapolis. I got my big break. I moved away from, this is out in Montana, right? I mean, that's where she lived. She was an Air Force brat. She was out there. Her father was at a Air Force, because um, there's a lot of Air Force bases out in the Rocky Mountain West, because there were missiles out there, right? This was during the time when Russia and America were like, ooh. The Cold War. Right? The Cold War. And so you've got all these missile sites all over the place. And in places remotely like Wyoming and Montana and Colorado and Nebraska, you've got all these missile sites out there. And her dad was in the Air Force stationed out there. And that's how she came to be out there in the middle of nowhere. And that's how I met her. But I moved to Minneapolis, so we had a long-distance relationship, and then we eventually got married, and then I carted her all over the country, and, oh, man, she is just awesome. She was so good to pick up no matter what. If I'd get another job, wouldn't question it, and she would be packed and ready to go. And she goes, well, I'm used to it. I was an Air Force brat. We moved all over anyway. So anyway, that was the deal. Um, so that's a little bit about me. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. But um, let me find out about you guys a little bit, if you would. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions as we go around the room. I'll start up here, of course. You're sitting up front. Um, the videographer, your name, and are you doing AV? Yes, I'm doing AVP. Okay. Uh, my name's Dade. And Dave, let me ask you, and a lot of you may not know this. Dade. I'm sorry? Dave. D-A-D-E. Oh, Dade. I'm sorry, Dave. Um, a lot of you may not know this yet, but I'm going to ask you what you think you might want to be eventually in life. Um, okay. And if you're not sure, just some possibilities. I have no idea at your age, so I can relate to that. But what do you think? Where are you going to go from here? Right now, I'm looking at um, being a radiation therapist. Oh, cool. Yeah, going to college for radiology and stuff. How would one be interested in radiology of all things? Because it's pretty specified. Yeah, I was just like looking at jobs one day and I just saw it and I looked into it and I was like, wow, that looks cool. Really? Yeah. Kind of randomly almost. Mm -hmm. It was well, that's random. Awesome. Okay, that's cool. 